You're watching NewsX, I'm Udaya Pratap Singh in a big NewsX exclusive. Uh, Nirmala Sitaraman, the finance minister, has spoken to NewsX's editor-in-chief, Rishabh Gulati. She's outlined Prime Minister Modi's vision for a Viksit Bharat and has emphasized that the primary objective is to ensure that every Indian leads a dignified life. The finance minister has highlighted that the government is working round the clock to deliver basic amenities such as water, electricity and healthcare. Even though the Prime Minister has set a roadmap for a developed India by 2047, Union Minister Sitaraman has expressed optimism over the saturation of welfare schemes and said it will happen much earlier. She has stated that the idea of fulfilling the dreams of the people of India goes beyond basics and also covers environmental concerns in future industries, whether renewable energy, frontier AI or space tech. Let's listen in to this excerpt. What does a Viksit Bharat look like? Does it mean 100% saturation of the schemes? Everybody has a house, everybody has a toilet. Every, or does it mean roadways? Does it mean bullet trains? Does it mean, I don't know, flying cars? What, is, what does Viksit Bharat mean? Uh, it means almost all that you're saying. I'm not talking about flying cars or what. It means that India where you can be leading a dignified life. You don't have to go into the deep jungle to relieve yourself. You don't have to go miles to get drinking water to your house. You don't uh, need to have to search for a hospital to admit your senior citizens at home. You don't need to say, I don't have the money to treat myself. You'll have medical cover. So it is certainly an India where basic communities will definitely be reaching saturation. Not till 2047, we'll reach sat saturation much earlier. In most of these schemes where house, provision of house, provision of electricity, water to the house, we are close to saturation. So taking India beyond that, improving the income earning potential for people to do businesses, for better connectivity, for better futuristic industries, for pollution control, renewable energy, leading in AI, also having some of the frontier industries, your space, being a good leader for space technologies for the world, not just for India. Madhav Nalapath, the editorial director of the Sunday Guardian, is joining us live. We also have Dr. P.S. V. Rao, consultant surgeon, Manipal Hospital, Hebal, Bengaluru, uh, live with us. Sumit Peer, political commentator, is joining us live. We also have Dr. Jajit Bharachare, President Center for Digital Economy Policy Research, live with us. Uh, Professor Nalapath, the clear definition of Viksit Bharat being given there by the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman, and she believes it, it will be achieved. By 2047, in fact, perhaps earlier, if these uh, government schemes outlined by Prime Minister Modi continue the way they are. Well, uh, I'd like to say, Uday, that uh, Finance Minister Sitaraman has been working in an extremely disciplined manner. She has not allowed short-term uh, events to, to affect her the long-term strategy of Prime Minister Modi, which, as outlined by the uh, Finance Minister to NewsX, and tomorrow morning, uh, readers of the Sunday Guardian are also going to, uh, to, to, to get uh, what the finance minister is saying. The reality is that, that the, the first term was basically in creating the foundation. And the second term was creating the superstructure. Now the structure is ready, the foundation is ready. Now comes, if I may say so, a period of rapid economic growth and a period of of, uh, of income generation, even among the most disadvantaged people of society, reaching right up to the village level. And don't forget, Uday, India lives in the villages even today to a considerable extent. India also lives in, in cities, and are now both in cities and villages, right to the level of the most underprivileged. Uh, these transformative changes are going to reach uh, during Modi 3.0. That was the message given by the finance minister. And the way the fiscal deficit has been contained, the way you have seen the, you know, the uh, re revenues come up, you are seeing the very steady, step-by-step, -step methodical manner in which the finance minister has brought forward the prime minister's agenda. I am very confident that what she says is going to be borne out in fact during Modi 2.0. Okay, let me uh, take that straight across to uh, Sumit Peer as well. Sumit Peer, uh, clearly, of course, a definition of Viksit Bharat now being provided by the finance minister. You know, we, we hear this slogan a lot by the government. 
uh, by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, of course. He said it from the ramparts of the Red Fort as well. Uh, we're hearing it in uh, poll campaigns of the BJP as well. Uh, but now a proper definition being set out uh, by the Finance Minister Sumit Peer. And, and obviously the, the poll pitch is that the government, current government wants to be re-elected so that they can continue this vision for a Vixit Bharat till 2047. Otherwise, they say things may falter. Well, then, thank you for having me on your show. Well, uh, Nirmala ji has made it clear. You see, when there was a Congress Raj, we were only told, Garibi hatani, Garibi hatayenge. Hamne dekha, hum dekh rahe, hum dekhenge. But when it came to action, there was nothing called action. Now, if you look at what the Honorable, uh, you know, uh, Finance Minister of India has to say, a lot of schemes will saturate before that. Because in my opinion, when I look at the things, there are more than 9,000 pro developmental projects which are doing, which are happening anytime in India. We have put more than $330 billion in the infrastructure, which is highest in the world. If you look at our GDP infrastructure spent, if you look at today, we are not talking for null road, sadak or airport as a privilege we are saying to all. Gone are those days, we'll say we'll have one Guru Gram and we'll have one Hyderabad and one Bangalore and we are very, very happy with that. No, with vocal for local, we are trying to create a Guru Gram everywhere. Gone are those days that you got a, you get a factory and you start uh, and uh, that's how a Guru Gram starts. Now, with Make in India, there are small industrialist towns and villages and kasbas are coming out. Now, if you look at the number of IITs, if you look at the number of IITs, IIMs, if you look at the number of universities, 390 new universities, 399 universities, IIT, IIMs and all they have doubled. In UP, I think the 54 medical colleges have come up. So, the overall development index, which includes Jal, Pani, Nal, Hawaii, Jaha, Sadak, which includes availability to medicine, if you look at 100,000 Jandan Aushadi Kendras, if you look at the cost of, you know, uh, cost of, uh, you know, cost of day to day giving a birth to a child has substantially come up because of the medical cover. If you look at 54 crore people under Jan Jandan, uh, under Ayushman Bharat, and which are giving, getting a Paach Lakka insurance cover, which is highest in the world. 80 crore people are being fed, 250 million people, 25 crore logo you have taken out of the, what you call as the poverty. And yet what we are left with is, I think, around one and a half crore people. That's all what we are left with. Now, this holistic development coupled with it, your opportunities to earn, your vocal for local, your Lakpati Didi, your drone Didi, your, you know, the things which are going to the local level. Today, the biggest FMCG company in the India is not a Procter & Gamble, is not a, is not a Unilever, is the Amul. With last, I think last year, 72,000 crores of sales, that is the biggest FMCG company in the India. So this revolution wherein we, Indian economy is not depending on foreign powers, is not depending on the multinationals to only come and set up business here, but our things are you know increasing. Look at our eco startup system, third highest in the world, created around more than $400 billion of wealth, employed more, around a million people now, right? And we have 117 or 18 unicorns when I last <clears> looked <throat> at it. So this improvement in the structure, now even I was reading yesterday, I think Navy or the Army has said within the next two or three years, they will not be importing even one packet of ammunition from anywhere, only for those small arms, which is not men, which is not viable to manufacture here. So that dependence of ammunition is gone out of today. You are a you are a net from net importer of weapons or exporter of weapons. In 2013, we were we were the net importer of mobile phones. Now we are the second biggest exporter of mobile phones. The biggest mobile phone factory is in for Samsung is in Noida and Apple's 25 production 25 percent of the production has to come will come from India so if you look at these sea changes which is not only limited to you know Ghar, Nal and Sadak it is a holistic development of the country wherein the per capita incomes which are already doubled in Modi tenure are going to go further up so India is looking at leading the world we are controlling 45 percent of the food basket of the world we are number fourth in hydrocarbons we are number fourth in space today when we talk so when you are, we are, we are the only country who will successfully do 20% blending in ethanol, yet we imported crude from Russia, which saved at $8 billion is the official number now. So when you look at these developments and yet you are a nuclear triad, you have, you have tested dozens of missiles and all, nobody can dare to put an eye on you. Today, you are growing at 6.5% because the world is softening their stance on you. Everybody wants to come to India and do the business. This all-round change of from Bimaru 5, from the you know that fragile 5 to almost a number third economy in the world. IMF has recently said in one year will be the number fourth economy, but number third. Look at the banks which had a loss of 80,000 crores. Look at the banks which have a profit of 1 lakh crores. Look at ED has confiscated 125 lakh crores of assets. So the people who looted and pawned the country. So this sea change... And let me remind you, Odaiji, what did Peter Ramram Saab said when we were at number 11th? He said it will take us 30 years to reach number 5. 30 years. He said on the House of Parliament. 
Now that was done in nine years. Now in ten years, we are talking of number three. That is what the Modi magic has done. You know, DPTs, yes. your middlemen gone. It is a three sixty degree. Yes, and it's a it's a three sixty degree vision. Five dimensional development. And, and you know, Vixit Bharat is is not just going to be achieved if there is development in one sector, but in Correct. all sectors, Doctor P S V Rao, isn't it? Is that the true definition, according to you, and from what you're hearing from the FM? Yes. Good evening, uh, Uday, and all panelists and viewers. You are uh, very much right in what you are saying. See, if uh, you need to uh, really have a Vixit Bharat, it will have to be inclusive of the 1.4 billion population, and the only way that will happen is right from the beginning. Prime Minister. Kept saying, "I will reform, then I will perform, then I will transform, then it will transform." So he started reforming. He provided financial services to the um, rural areas. He spread out the through the Jandhan Yojana. He then uh, ensured the telecommunication uh, network reached out to them. Now through roads and various other facilities, uh, logistics is reaching out to them. If you are an agriculturist, one of your problems is getting the raw material, and then once you have the produce, getting it to the market. Now, uh, yeah, as far as uh, getting to the market, not only logistics. Now they have the platform, the three major platforms which were put up by the software industry, uh, thanks to Nandan Nilakeni and team. They first started with the financial aspect, that was the rupee uh, uh, system. Then they put out another platform where. You, uh, uh, this uh, 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 trading, etc., has also now been brought in into that. So you have various ways by which development and the necessary resources for it are reaching out to all the 1.4 billion. It is not just the urban areas which are developed. And this is means uh, if you take G all this talk about GDP, we are fifth and going to third, etc. What is GDP based on? GDP is based on your population growth and your increase in efficiency. So, if you are going to increase your GDP, your population should be involved in it. There is no point having population growth and no development going. So, our population has been growing over the years. It is only now the economy which had gone down to number ten is growing. So, you have to. Reach out to the entire population, involve the whole thing. Then only it will be Vixit Bharat. It won't be Vixit uh, urban areas only. And uh, the fact that the efficiency will go up if the grow uh, agriculture is where most of our uh, population is, and still they are in uh, agricultural uh, sector. Then the only way is that if you provide them all the facilities. Now they are also by encouraging self-employment, by encouraging. Uh, uh, startups and skilling people. What they are doing is don't keep chasing government jobs. You uh, and keep uh, uh, pressi pressurizing on reservation. You go out and self-employ yourself. This is a, dip a typical um, habit of the Gujaratis, which is now the whole uh, India is appreciated. You do your own thing. You can a large part of the population can be self-employed instead of chasing government jobs. And the private sector is also now being pushed, saying that come on, we are giving you all the incentives you want, all the resources you want, the financial help. Remember, the corporate uh, tax rates were also lowered, and the FIIs are being encouraged to come in and invest in India, so that the finances are available. The banking sector has been sort problems have been sorted out. Most of the bad loans have been sorted out. Companies which were sick are not being on artificial yes. uh, ventilation. They are now being either liquidated or sorted out. So uh, the whole world is looking at India, saying, "Wow, if they can uh, take out so much from poverty, they can grow so fast. Why can't we?" And our nation did the best with COVID uh, management. Both with the health aspects of it and with the financial aspects of it, and we didn't go around giving uh, um, using debt and uh, ran a big uh, 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 problem with the inflation. The inflation is under control. The debt is under control, and this is why we are growing at 6.5 percent. Likely that it will keep increasing.
So health yes. has been taken care of. Yes. Uh, the wealth has been taken care of. And your infrastructure and everything has been taken care of. And the bonus is That's the, the part. The financial That's the part for a Vixit Bharat, according to yes. Dr. Jadid yes. Bharacharya. What is the true definition of Vixit Bharat? You've heard what the FM has to say. What is your take? What is the true definition of Vixit Bharat? And is it achievable by 2047, as the government says, its goal is? You know, uh, 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 everything that the finance minister said and everything that my co-panelist said is uh, a part of Vixit Bharat. I'll add to it. Um, when the entire society matures to a certain level, that's also being part of Vixit Bharat. If the society demands that I would like to have an ability to earn, uh, that I would like to see my children do better, that I will not spit on the streets, I will not throw garbage out on the street, that is also part of Vixit Bharat. Unfortunately, what, what we are seeing happening is that we are moving in terms of hard indicators towards a Vixit Bharat. So we're getting better infrastructure thanks to the, to the government. We're getting you know, toilets, we're getting homes. Uh, but when we go in for voting, we are still not voting with a Vixit Bharat mindset. And uh, I think that's a huge change that has to come in over a period of time because simplistic arguments that I'll take money from, um, you know, from somebody else and give it to you uh, makes me very happy as a voter. You know, that is not the thought process of a Vixit Bharat. A Vixit Bharat person will say that I would like to earn on my own and therefore I will be prosperous and make others also prosperous. Uh, one of the factors, if you look at it from that standpoint, is that earlier we would have licenses in everything. So therefore, whatever you do, you you will have to, have to face the government, come and kneel down in front, in front of the government, grovel before them. And therefore, the whole concept of startups would be completely alien. Added to that, if you're trying to start a new industry, then the law is silent on it because there is no licensing thought of of a new industry. So you'll never start a new industry. So you'll only start an industry when the rest of the world has done it, the government has, has sat on it, thought of what is the license that they will give, and only then India will be the 10th or the 12th or the 50th nation which can start that industry. And that is what reflected in India's uh, ranking also. Now with the opening up of the mindset, driven by policies such as, you know, you go ahead and do your own startups, we'll back you up, we'll change the law. What happened in drones? Everybody was worried, oh, drones will be used to bomb India, drones will be used to, you know, sabotage planes, they will get into the engines of planes. All of that was slashed out. The government said, we'll take the risk, but India cannot stop in terms of drones. Please go ahead and fly, literally and figuratively. And we have a thriving drone industry, millions of jobs getting created, the drone DDs in the, in the rural villages are, uh, are happening. So it's a massive mindset change. Let me take the small example of, um, you know, clean India. Uh, globally, people were laughing at it. The people, people were laughing at toilets being created. The jokes was on the Clean India campaign. However, we see a, a stark response that has happened. Earlier, if you would throw something on the street, you could not be challenged. Now, when you throw something on the street, you do get challenged. And these are small pieces that build towards the, uh, the Vixit India concept. Now, what I would like to add to it is, as we become Vixit India, we should be the first to do certain things. Uh, as of now, we are still the number three, number two, not the number 20th, number 15th that we used to be, but we are number two, number three. Uh, in AI, we are in the top set of uh, countries globally, which is into AI. Uh, but we should now start creating new technologies, new frontiers, new ecosystem that the rest of the world will follow. And I'm absolutely sure that by 2047, that's what India will be doing. And that what, that's, what, that's, that's what will make us uh, a Vixet Bharat. And that can only be propelled by the mindset that is getting changed now. Now you see young people thinking freely, which was unheard of, unthinkable uh, 10, 15 years back. Uh, we don't, you know, there's no way to quantify it and, and look at the matrices. But the outcome is very clear. If you've got 108, 109 unicorns, you know what's happening in this country. It's a different country right now. And that has to continue if we need to achieve Vixit Bharat. Okay. Let me, uh, you know, take that across to uh, uh, Professor Nalapat. The goal has been set out. We've defined it as well. Now, the big question, is it achievable? Do you believe it can be achieved by 2047? Is it feasible or a long shot? Professor Nalapat. Look, the fact of the matter is that 
let's say you want to go from one city to the other. You need a road map. You need a good road to take you there and you need to follow the map. Now, the point of the matter is, and you need a, you need a competent, capable individual who knows how to read a map and who knows how to get you there and handle the vehicle. So very frankly, Uday, the core issue, which I think Jaydeep was touching on, is leadership. You need a leadership with a forward vision. You need a le leadership that's futuristic and which is able to enable people. And that is the whole point. Now, I, we have had the good fortune of having that kind of, of leadership. And I'm absolutely confident that if the, once that is continued into the next five and 10 years, nothing is going to be able to stop India. We are now at the stage when we are entering the takeoff. So now in about four, in about four or five years, we'll be, in, we'll be having uh, the, the period of stable flight. So I think the next four or five years is very crucial. A lot of hard work has gone in the last 10 years in ensuring that the, the economy is now moving into a stable double-digit takeoff. And I think it's very, very important that that same forward vision, that same able, you know, uh, uh, pair of hands, if I may say so, that same clear sense of direction, all that is being reflected in the finance minister's interview in NewsX and in Sunday Guardian, the, the, the basically guided by the prime minister, that is absolutely essential. Eventually, I know China, for example, without Deng Xiaoping, China would have been nothing e even today. It would have been poorer than, uh, than many countries in Africa. And that is the importance of leadership. That's the importance of transformative ideas. So uh, the, 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 the whole reality is, frankly, that but for those years of the Deng reform, China would not have been the second largest economy in the world. Now, but for the years of transformation, the 10 years and five and 10 years later, you are going to see a completely transformed India that is not only in the top three, but is very likely to overtake China, given the slackening of growth in China and become among the top two. And for that, you need vision, ability and direction. As the finance minister said, that has come, been there in abundance. And my and if, uh, if every op the opinion polls are right, we are going to continue to get that. So I'm very optimistic about the future of India. Okay. And, you know, uh, at the end of the day, of course, the politics of it all is that, you know, the FM and the APM say that, you know, the fact is that they are the ones now correcting historical injustices. The Congress just gave the slogan of Garibi Hatao. They're the ones actually doing it now. Sumit P. Uday, the problem is that Congress was only interested in keeping this country poor. They wanted to you and me and our Anevali Das generations to be in Bijli, Pani and Ration Ki line. Ration Ki line mein hi zindagi nikal nidi. They wanted this. Then they wanted to have five publications, two channels and control the narrative and say, Ghari bhi hata rahe, kaam chal raha and win. Now, if you look at what the what the, what has happened in last 10 years under the leadership of Modi ji, India has not changed physically, mentally, but at an aspirational level. Now, we as Indians, we as Bharatis have different aspirations. We are talking of startups, we are talking of technology, we are talking of dominating the industries, we are talking of Atmanir Bhar Bharat, we are talking of made in India. The confidence which he has got in the Bharat and Bharati is phenomenal. If you look at the road government's roadmap, I've seen it uh, in some other documents. There are three circles. The first circle, the inner circle is basics. All the basic things will be met by 2027-28. Second circle is ease of living. That will be met by 2030 or 32. And after 32 to 47, you will go to the standard of living, which would be much better than European and American countries, considering the cost of living. You will have a much higher, higher standard of living, considering the cost of living. Even in today, if you look by PPP, we have $14 trillion. So that means if you and me are earning, right, say, uh, you know, 1 lakh rupees here, it's like earning 5 lakh rupees in the United States of America, because that is what the money will get you. 
So if you look at those things, and then we are talking of holistic development, we are talking of uh, global south, we are talking of Vasudevam Kutumbam, and we have no disparity here. We are talking of Sabka Sa, Sabka Vika, Sabka Vishwas. With that kind of a vision, and where India's supreme national interest takes the front seat in any aspect, let it be any geopolitical aspect, let it be any national or international aspect. Now, this new resilient India, which has started, started the IMAC corridor, which is talking of the biofuel alliance, which, is, which has got a G20 declaration done, without anybody putting a dot or iota to it, which has told the world, India can go on and take the global initiatives without China. China ki zaroat nahi hai. India, Modi ji has shown to the world that the biggest stigma which has been broken, oh, you cannot live without Pakistan. You have to take Pakistan with you. Pakistan has to be part of your baggage. You have to maintain good relations with Pakistan. Otherwise, India cannot develop. All these things have shattered and he has been very clear that, you know, I am bothered about the future of my youth and I am working for the future of my youth. Garib, Kisan, Naujawan. And these are the kind of divisions that the Pradeji gave that and with it, the culturally we are progressing. People are accepting our Prime Minister in a Kurta, yes. Pajama and Khad. People are accepting our millets. People like our vegetarian meals. People are proud that we are Hindus and we are accepting our culture. Yoga Day is the okay. second celebrated event in the world after Women's Day Odai. Katsi Prime Minister Modi. My uh, thanks to all of our guests for joining us on this discussion. We've run completely out of time. Let's take a short break. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.